On this page, we're going to work with creating links. I've done a sample, but it's not a full sample because you need to do 15 links, and I've probably got about eight. But once you've done them, it's pretty easy to keep repeating them. So you're going to notice that I have some local on-page links that will take you lower down onto the page. So top will take you back to the top. Tutorials will take you to tutorials, free resources, and personal sites. And when I have sites in here, I'm actually taking you to a new tab, or it actually gives it's up to the user preferences if you open in a new tab or a new page. And typically when you're doing web design, you do have things that are going to an external website, open in a new tab or new page. That's just pretty standard. Um, you actually have two parts to this assignment. You're going to create this page. You need an image of some sort that is also a link. And then you need to have your 15 links broken down into three categories. And then you're going to need to also create an index page for the whole Web 105 or Web 115 site. And so you're going to create, and I've done some CSS with this, which you're going to start learning in upcoming chapters just to make it a little bit more attractive. But you're going to put a link each week, and this is going to be part of your grade going forward. Um, part of each assignment is to create a new link to this page. So with each assignment that you add, you'll link to your index page. And this should be named Index, and it's the top level in your Web 115 folder. And you'll notice that these links are linking to my assignments. They're not we're opening into a new page because it's in the same site. So let's take a look at this page first. And I do have an external dial sheet, which you'll learn about next week. But basically, I have created a header, and then I have a section, which I have named Main. This is important with the style sheet, which you'll learn later. And then I have closed this, then I have a Nav section in here, and then I close the section and the division, the body, and the HTML. And this is all pretty simple. Um, you just have a list, and I'm using an unordered list, with a link. And this is showing you the link inside of our website. It's going to 01 index, 02 index. And I'm going to keep going that way. And then after the anchor portion closes, this is the part that displays on screen. Let's make it a little larger. So this part is all about the, the unordered list, the LI tags. The links are the A, which stands for anchor, hypertext reference, and then I'm linking to a page inside of my current directory. And you can see here in Dreamweaver that for each folder that I've created, I have created an index page. And I could actually, if I went to the top of Web 115, I've gone into more detail than I actually need to on this list. Because here, I could just go to the folder, and it will work just fine. I'm going to save this, and I'm going to upload the page. dependent file there is a CSS file, and I'm going to reset this. It doesn't change anything out here. It still goes here, but you'll notice it's just going to 06, not 06 index.html. So when the at each folder level, you can use index. You can specify it all the way down, but index is the default. If you just put the folder as we've done here, index will be navigated to by default. That's the default page that shows up, which is why we're using index.html. So you can do it either way, and they're both appropriate. If you want a type list, 
as long as you've named your, uh, your page as index.html, and make sure that index is with a lowercase i, the links end up being the same. Now for this week's homework, sorry, that's next week's, um, it's a little different, the code here. Let's just take a quick look, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. It's either Command or Control Plus, depending on if you're Mac or PC. Control Plus on a PC, Command Plus on a Mac. And so we have our header. The, in the green here, these are comments. Um, and so I start with, in the header, this is the header right here, I have a link to maryhelp.net. Now this is an external link. When you're doing a static, not relative link, an absolute link that's to an exact address on a web page, you need to include the HTTP colon, the slash slash. Basically, your best bet is just copying from one of these to make sure it's absolutely right. And then that is being applied. Since my image is nested inside the tag here, that makes the image the link. And then I have and that will, of course, go all the way out. It has alt tag and closes, and it has an anchor named top. That's what these are li linking to, to take it back to the top of the page. And then I have just my H1 list of links that I find useful, and I close that. But the anchor actually closes after the image. So the image is a link, but this H1 text is not. Then in here I have a navigation section that's actually breaking it down. Now typically, if I were really doing this on a web page and making it look good, I would make these bullets disappear and I would not stack them. But we, we need CSS to get into that and we haven't gotten there yet. So these are linking to on-page locations. And when you're linking to an on-page location, and watch how this changes up here. So go to Free Resources you'll see it appends to the end of my URL, the hashtag free. You can do that on an external page as well where you go to a specific spot if there's a anchor there. So when it's linking to tutorials, this is what it's linking to right here, this spot, tutorials. It's an anchor and it's been named tutorials. And then I have my link to the top which is named up here, anchor named top. And so for each anchor, I have a name, and then I link to that name with the hashtag to show that I'm going specifically to that spot. So for my external sites, I'm using the target as an additional property of my anchor tag. So I've got a target of underscore blank. That's what forces it to open into a new page. I give each one a title so that it has a tooltip. Let me go back over here where it's in focus. And so that gives the title makes it have a tooltip. And each one again will open into a new page. And then again you need the whole site. And when I'm doing this to make sure there aren't any errors. What I typically do is copy, and if I were to paste that into Dreamweaver, and we'll just drop it right here for a second. When I paste it, even though you don't see it, the HTTP comes with it. Let's pull that back out. So copying and pasting is the safest way to make sure that your actual links will work. And then this part between the end of your opening anchor tag and the closing anchor tag is what actually displays on screen. So that's what's appearing here. And by default, unless you change the formatting, all links will appear underlined. And the, they're changing color on links that I've visited. So you should look in here 
at the sample for how to do it. The green sections are the green parts here are um, comments. It's a good idea once you start using a lot of sections just to note which closing section tag closes which section when you're using IDs. I try to do a closing tag for each one, and that's just commented. It's ignored by the browser. That's just for human beings who are going back to read this and update it later. To open a comment, you have your opening bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash. To close it, it's dash, dash, closing bracket. And you'll see missing my parentheses here. It doesn't mean anything. The editor will ignore any typos inside of comments. So that's your sample for this week. You, it's a two-part assignment. You have to create both this page and this page. And it's also a good idea when you're inside the pages to create a link back to your main page. So you can go ahead and let me open up Lab 5. You can either do that I'm going to just put it in the end of the section here. I'm going to put a couple blank lines. This is a non-breaking space. That's what it stands for. That gives me a blank, blank line. And then you can put in a link to your home page. Now if you're going to do it this way, make sure to include the HTTP. Otherwise you can, there's another format I'll show you in a second. And so that will give you a link back to the home page. Or you can go up a level. Make sure you understand your folder structure. You may have to test this. And I always forget how to do this, so we'll give it a shot. Um, And I may get to show you how to check for broken links in here. Okay, so it's gonna now if I want this to, if I'm formatting this better, I should have dropped each of these into a paragraph that forces the line break. Okay, so I should test this, so I'm going to save it. There's a couple ways to test it. I can hit live and see how it's going to look. Links don't really work in here, but I can test it locally by choosing preview, and this one should work. And we'll see if I did this one right. And that one worked just fine. Okay, so either way, works for that, and then you would, of course, upload. Take live off. Put it up on the web. And you can see that if you just want to use the relative route, it's dot dot slash index.html that takes you up a folder level. Or you can go the absolute path of the address on the internet, but it's a good idea in future homework assignments to link back to your home page. So that's your linking assignment for this week. By the time you've done 15 or 20 links, you'll have the format pretty much memorized and you won't really have to think much about it again.